stop my car in the middle of traffic and I get out and I stand on top of the hood and I scream at the top of my lungs, FUCK! And welcome to another episode of 72 Pin Connector. With us this week, we have the Tom. What's up? Yeah, that's right. I just said the Tom for the some Tom. reason. I the am, Tom. I am the Tom. You're the Tom. Tom. I am the, the only Tom. Of the Toms. I am. There is no other Tom that is more Tom than me, except maybe Tom Selleck. Tom Selleck? <laughs> maybe. He's pretty Tom. He's he, pretty, is, he is pretty Tom. He's fairly Tommy. <laughs> yeah. Tommy Tom Tompkins. And the Adam. Hello. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so how was your guys' this weeks? Good. Pretty solid. Pretty good I week. Got, I got some gaming in. Did Ooh. you? I did. I really did. Fancy. Well, uh, why don't you just tell us about that a little bit, huh? Oh, we're, we're getting right into this? Oh, yeah. just, get, thought... just right into it. Just 100 miles an hour. Let's go. All right. All right. So uh, I went to this new um, sushi and Asian grill place today. Uh, I got Shanghai noodles, which are like the thick cut Chinese noodles with chicken uh-huh. stir fry. It was like a soy teriyaki fused blend sauce stuff. Really good. Okay. Bamboo shoots, sprouts, it's wonderful snow peas. It's really good stuff. And it was actually cheaper than like the shitty Chinese delivery I usually get. Well, because nice. delivery in Seattle is like, oh, you want this food? 12 bucks. You want it delivered? $35. Yeah, basically. <laughs> but yeah, and it's it's right down the street. Like, I, I can get wasted. I can walk there. I can have some really good Chinese food and get wasted at the Chinese place and then walk back. It's amazing. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> that's awesome. That's that's my entire that's purpose in life and the entire reason I live where I do. Let's get wasted on Chinese. On get wow, get wasted on no, Chinese food. No, you said it on right. get, and around Chinese food. <laughs> get wasted on Chinese food. <laughs> that's what I do. So have have you eaten anything fantastic? I know we just had some pizza. I, no, 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 my, nothing. nothing? So I've well, the only thing I can say is that I have recently started making omelets in a very different way. So other than that, no. Oh, oh, well. So yeah, I'm that, boring. That sucks. But I know how to make a <laughs> badass omelet now. The key, nice. You always push the cooked back to the center. You don't let it set because okay. it'll burn and it won't be light and fluffy. Well, you need it light huh. and fluffy. Otherwise, it's not an omelet. It's just it's, an egg sandwich. It's like life. <laughs> so Adam, I had some good food. Yes, do tell. I found a really, really good barbecue place. Really? In Ohio? Yes. Yeah, believe it or not. Man. Yeah, it was in uh, uh, those who are local, Fairborn, Ohio, near the mall. Uh, there was a really good barbecue place, and it's pretty close to where we've been working, setting up a new store. So we went there at lunch on Friday, and I was useless the rest of the day. I got a half a rack of ribs. Uh, they do the dry rub and the smoke, and they leave the sauces on the table. So you get them unsauced, and you can pick from like they have like seven or eight sauces. Nice. So now are the sauces that. like homemade, or are they like from a jar homemade. somewhere? Homemade, homemade sauces. Yeah, they, and it's like mm. Kansas City style sauce. There's a Memphis sauce. There's a Carolina sauce. There's a spicy sauce. <sighs> there's their signature sauce signature sauce oh my god yeah the sauciest of the sauce okay so i gotta ask am i the only one yeah. who says when i hear carolina sauce like i kind of gag a little bit yeah yeah i do too well, it depends on which carolina sauce you're talking about there mustard base yeah oh um, nah, i'm not big on the mustard base you know I'm, I'm gonna go out on a limb i'm gonna lose us some <laughs> followers here <laughs> mustard based barbecue is the worst thing to ever happen to barbecue ever oh god agreed yeah like, um mustard based barbecue has no place in this world i think people that boil their ribs before they grill them are that's a thing <laughs> yeah. well it's a thing because then what you're doing is you're getting the meat cooked a little before so you don't have to worry about undercooked ribs so you don't char them no well, okay but, yeah, but, but here comes a question oh shit that was my mic sorry about that <laughs> um do you guys enjoy having that hard crusty outer edge of your ribs yes 
then yeah. that, then you, uh, it's understandable but you're against boiling i don't i like my ribs to just fall right off the bone be nice be juicy <laughs> and for the love These... of god tom and i are going to destroy the mic setup here today <laughs> we really are I'm, I'm trying to apologize in chat because we just lost like six of our core followers and an actual podcaster so so josh oh, says he's he's out because you know mustard barbecue so so well, that said, that said, if he likes mustard barbecue, do we really want him on this team? No. Thanks for the shirt. You're fucking <laughs> oh, wow. gone. But <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Mustard barbecue sauce is the fucking worst. I don't care what anyone says. I agree with Prototrix. Uh we we need to have a barbecue stream. Oh, I, can, yeah. I can I can whip up some badass barbecue. Yeah, we're gonna need a barbecue stream. When I come out there to visit this year, we're gonna get some good barbecue and we're gonna cast and we're gonna eat and cast. Hell yes. <laughs> Only thing I'm going to say is I don't know of good barbecue joints around here. I mean, in Seattle, there there's, there's bound to be there some. There has to be some. I, I saw. Here. So, so I live in a in, uh, place that's near Seattle, um, and there is a place downtown, like five minutes away from me. And apparently they've got good barbecue. So we should go. Okay. Well, I mean, there's going to be good barbecue everywhere, but I mean, it's, we've got to try it though. I've it, never been disappointed in Seattle food. I've never been disappointed in barbecue. I mean, I've been. This isn't great. <laughs> oh, but I, barbecue is fucking barbecue. It's always no, it's like I've, pizza. I've had bad I've barbecue. Had some bad barbecue. Like I've I've had barbecue where like the ribs were tough. You had to sort of like chew them off the bone. It didn't like fall off. It. I've had, some but it's still good. It's just not as good. It wasn't though. Like it was beef jerky substitute. Is what it tasted like. So it's a slim jim. It, it, Basically, I love slim jim. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so what? what yeah, Urkis if you said, order ribs at a restaurant, and they give you a slim jim, you're going to be pretty disappointed. No, what was going to happen? I'm going to order ribs. Like, do you want that to fall off the bone? Like, no. Actually, I want to unwrap it from the plastic and slather sauce on it before it hits the grill. <laughs> oh God. The the thing I'm going to miss is uh is jazz and ribs fest because that was yes. a good ass and that, time. That's that's coming up soon too, and you guys yeah. are going to be there. Yeah. And so for those whom are Ohio based 72 PC fans, Columbus has their annual jazz and ribs fest in July. Um, they get probably 20 or so barbecue joints at least every year to come through. Yeah, at least. And what we would do mm -hmm. is we'd have six or seven of us and we would get samplers from, I think per weekend, we'd end up with samplers from about 15 of them. Yeah. And we yeah. would just, all just indulge in nothing but cornbread mac and cheese and barbecue sauce so if if you're heading out to any sort of barbecue festival here's the pro tip mm -hmm. this is how you do it right you got to min max your barbecue um <laughs> here's here's your current build everyone buys a rack of ribs from a different place and you all come together and you eat each other's barbecue it's a communal barbecue joint because if you go yes. like onesie twosie like oh we're all gonna get famous daves today well now everyone's just got a plate of famous daves and you've got to wait in an entirely different line and the so, worst thing in that story is you got fucking famous daves right? something you can buy the sauce in every national grocery chain in the exactly country. Hey, i'll tell you what that sauce is good though no 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 it no it's good it's good but you don't but, go yeah, i get it it's it's like going to france and still getting like applebee's yeah <laughs> exactly. it's like yeah you're not enjoying it that, that said i did just come back from dc and i think i had taco bell or wendy's 12 out of the 14 days oh, i was there God. what is dc known my for, body though? would turn inside uh, out corruption well outside of government <laughs> standards what's it <laughs> Oh, uh, that was dreadful. Tom, yeah, there's, there's nothing quick, there. Quick witted on that one. <laughs> he was ready. <laughs> um, so, so video games. Uh, we occasionally oh, yeah. play those. Yeah. Um, and I've actually I've got uh, a non-video game to talk about today too. That's actually not food. Oh. Um, okay. So first of all, uh, we're not going to get into spoilers. I'm not going to say anything um, other than tiny little things that aren't spoilers. I have completed Breath of the Wild's main quest. It is so nice. worth it. I feel completely justified in buying an entire system for this game. The The lead up to the final battle was some of the best, most awesome, most intense moments I've had in gaming. So as a Zelda fan, I understand from what I've heard about the stories. I can get you coming from that. While I still 100% agree this is a system buying game. It's mm -hmm. still a Zelda story, which means it is a half ass big story. And it just got really tense at the end because I, shit I got hard. I disagree. Yeah, but the gameplay is good. No, no, no. no the game pl pl play is some of the best gameplay I've played but in years. But you see, you haven't you haven't gone through 
every Zelda game, right? Like, like I have. So that every, doesn't matter. No, 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 no. You're wrong. And here's why. So every Zelda game has got a half ass story. Breath of the Wild story is three quarter assed. And see, that's it's why it's entirely <laughs> different. And this is why you're wrong because you're comparing it off of all. It's better. Exactly. Th- it's better than shit. Where I just came off Horizon right. Zero Dawn, <laughs> and I'm like, this yeah. story kind of sucks. I mean, I mean, it's not. It's not amazing, right? It's not the Swapper. It's not. You know, Bioshock had a pretty good twist at the end there. It's. It's nothing that's going to change your worldview. But for a Zelda story, it was up there as one of the best. Okay, I, I'm not going to say it not as a Zelda. I'm just saying as games as a whole. Yes, the story kind of mm-hmm. sucked. You're in that game because that game is amazing to play. I'm really disappointed in the story of Super Mario Sunshine for the record. <laughs> I'm disappointed you played in Super Mario Sunshine. It was a good game. I'm going to spray you. <laughs> okay. Okay. So I completed Beth- Breath of the Wild's main quest and I'm like, okay, fuck yeah. I'm going to 100% in this game now. I'm going to go forth. I'm going to get everything. And apparently you unlock a percentage counter at the end. So you can go to the menu and see your percentage. Um, anyone anyone want to take a guess? Um, you're probably at about 15. Higher? 22. Just 20. Damn. Yeah. So uh, I have put 75 hours into this game so far. I beat the main quest, and I have seen 20% of what the game has to offer. It's, huh. it's nuts. Well, no, you have to also keep in mind that percentage goes off of there's things called Korok seeds. And do you remember the pigeons and hidden packages in GTA? Yeah, that's true. Now uh, put yeah. five times that amount into a game. Nine times that amount. There's 600 Korok seeds. I thought there were 900. No, I think it's six. Either, yeah, okay, either way. A fuck ton. And that's he, an aspect <laughs> of games I never really cared for is the, the collection the item collections. Some stuff. people do. And that's 100% why they put it in. in Grand Theft Auto games. You know, I'm not really, yeah. I've never been into that. So much. The one thing I will say, it has a little bit of actual me- uh, mechanisms for you because it expands your inventory. Yeah. It's, it's not like the shooting the pigeons thing in GTA four where you shoot them and get fuck all for it, but it's yeah. that kind of fine. Like you climb to a top of a mountain, you lift up a rock. Oh, there's a core rock. You're yeah. on this ledge. There's a circle of lily pads in the water. You dive into it. Oh, there's a core rock. Like it's it's not anything that it. Some of them do feel arbitrary, but the majority of the crocs that I found has been holy fuck. I'm gonna climb to the fucking top of that thing because fuck yeah, I can beat that mountain. Yeah, you do. <laughs> they put the and Koroks, then there's a Korok there. They put the Koroks at points of interest. Yeah, and then they put them a lot of other places. But if you go to a really high peak, you're gonna find one. It's every it's time nice. you guys say Korox, uh, I think of Clorox and then I think of bleach. So <laughs> there's, there's so much Clorox in that game. <laughs> it's just it bleachy everywhere. We're whitewashing yeah. Zelda. <laughs> oh, yeah. God. First ghost in the shell. Now, Zelda. What's next? <laughs> um, other than that, uh, I played some cave story, um, which is getting kind of difficult. I, I enjoy yeah. it. I'm dying a fucking fuck ton all the time. Uh, But it's a good game. It's got a good challenge. Um, The story is forgettable at best. I mean, it's it's not Mm. bad. It's just not Mm. why you play the game. You play it because it's a retro, almost Metroidvania, but not really because it's not. Uh, It's it's okay. I I don't feel like it was worth 30 bucks, especially 15 years after it came out. But, (laughs) um, you know, if if you can pick it up for five or ten, it's worth that price. And you can find that anywhere. Um, and there's actually two games that I want to talk to you about, Irk, before I launch into my surprise review. Uh, first off, Rec Room. Yes. So, um, I finally I got you Tom. Guys play a little bit of that. Yeah, and Adam helped us because holy shit, I was having <laughs> issues getting the vibe to stream like no one's business. But um, I finally got Tom into playing some of the new Rec Room modes. Uh, they're called Quest. Um, these are like RPG, like one of them is sword and bow, but the best one is think laser tag, only you're playing against set piece enemies. It's really fun. So everyone has their own different laser guns are finding. You have to duck for cover, kill these enemies who have health bars. There's a medieval version. So if you don't want to use, you know, laser guns, you want to use swords and shields and bows, you can do that too. And then when you grow up, you can come back to the laser guns because yes. that mode is far superior. <laughs> I don't know. I like I like the archery one. That was a lot of fun. Except here's the thing: in this mode, there is friendly fire. 
So the first the first 10 seconds of us getting into this round, I walked into the room, I teleported near a bad guy because I had a sword, and Urk fucking bows me in the back of the head. <laughs> Don't block my shot, bitch. <laughs> like, it, it was it, not even 10 seconds into the round, and I am killed by friendly fire. And it's not <laughs> like this, oh, you took a little bit of damage. It's, you're fucking dead, dude. Yeah, that's kind of the caveat of the teleportation movement of VR games. Yeah. Yeah, you gotta, it's you got to communicate. It's a cooperative game, gentlemen. You need to be communicating. <laughs> well, and the thing is, it's point based, and I want to have the most points because, regardless of what it is, I'm always competitive. So I'm trying to shoot this fucking orc. I'm like, hold on. There's a window the size of a Pringles can. I can hit that. <laughs> Bam, arrow to the back of Tom's head. Yep, basically. <laughs> so Rec Room was fun. Uh, we also just got done playing some ARMS, the, the Switch fighting game. Yes. Oh, cool. um, and we did some online with it. And I will say it's pretty solid. Tom feels burned at 60 but I think I might get that out of it just because I really like sports based competitive games, but it's fun. Yeah, it's not bad. It's definitely better playing with someone next to you by far. Mm. Uh, and you know, really, most games are. Yeah, I would agree with even, that. I've even noticed single player games sometimes are a lot of fun. Just like, uh, especially like story, story driven ones you can get together with people and play and even if you're not the one playing, you can still enjoy it. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Growing up, my brother and I used to do that all the time. And of course, I was the one playing the games because I was the older. <laughs> so. And yeah, I've always found couch. Even I always want to say couch co-op, but just couch <laughs> playing. Me and one of my buddies did that with the original um, Ninja Gaiden. Well, yeah. I've got to watch how I say that. The original release on Xbox before Black Ninja Gaiden. Okay. So yeah, we sat there for an entire weekend to beat that fucker. But um, so want to get on. We did do different control schemes. I initially yes. tried the motion controls, and they actually played fairly well. But to jump, it you only use two buttons when you use motion controls. So you have the two bumpers on the top. One jumps, one dashes, and then everything else is with the motion, which works. But it just feels weird. That you're moving left, right, forward, back at the same things that you're punching with. Hmm. So I did not enjoy it. With it worked well, I just didn't enjoy it. It, it really, arms wants to push you towards motion controls. Um, a lot of the interface in the game is geared towards that. There's even like a like a splash screen when you start up the game that says, "Hey, use the thumbs up grip." It's like guys, come on! I I really don't want to. I, I really don't need to. <laughs> and and frankly, I play better, especially online, with the buttons. Um, there's yeah. less for me to think about. It's it, it I don't know. Waggle to punch someone kind of lost its charm with the Wii. Yes, but it also the default button scheme on this sucks. It reminds me of the old Halo, how you always had to switch to bumper jumper. Because mm. your punch buttons and then your jump button and dodge button are all the four buttons. So you can't really like grapple and jump then dodge at the same time uh, because that's like gotta, all four of them. You just got to well, get good. Are, are you, you punching with the controllers. buttons? Yes. <laughs> oh, you punch with the, the shoulders. Oh, the fucking control scheme said A, B for left, right. Yeah, you can do those, but you can also do the They should the definitely triggers. stress that, because that's <laughs> definitely better. Yeah, that's way better. I only punch with the triggers. Because that's why on Halo, I went to Bumper Jumper, because then I could jump, aim, shoot, and melee with all independent fingers. Yeah. Because that was actually one of the games I got really good at. So, so ARMS, <laughs> ARMS isn't bad. Uh, it's... Fuck you, Bubbles. Sorry. <laughs> it's far Whoa. better far better online um <laughs> but i do want to i do want to talk uh about a uh not a game per se but uh mm -hmm. netflix's castlevania dropped yesterday oh did it i didn't see that that released yes so the only reason i found out is because i was trying to watch a little bit more arrested development which uh, by the way tell your friends about show. this show that's such a good um, show jesus it really yeah. is. If you haven't seen Arrested <laughs> Development, go through it. It's fucking amazing. Or Se just finished yeah. it. And season four got way too much flack. Way right? too much flack. I, right? I never did watch season four. It's good. It's good. It's intertwined. It's similar, or, but yet different than the originals. The original three um, had their own way of intertwining. This was a more 
we're going to do it across the entire season intertwining rather than one episode. It's a bigger picture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Mm -hmm. I I really liked it. But that said, with Arrested Development, if you've seen it through once, you are missing 50% of the content. Uh, Going through it, you know, three or four times. I know that sounds ridiculous, but go through it three or four times because you will catch crazy, crazy things like people sitting on park benches. And I'm not going to spoil the rest of it, but there are things that happen that you just won't see before. (laughs) It's so good. I've only seen it through once. So, oh, uh, watch it. I'll definitely be going back because I've actually every weekend I'll like I'll go to bed. And since it's the weekend, I don't have to go to sleep like right now. You know, I'm like, I'll just put something on Netflix to go to sleep to or whatever yeah go go through arrested development and i'm always like i'm struggling finding something to do that with so i've been doing that with the alien movies oh nice because i'm gonna watch the new one there's there's actually a a series now that we're we're tangenting off onto netflix there's a series called jellies and it's literally just jellyfish set to like new age new wave music if you're trying to sleep it's amazing you basically have an aquarium with some soft tunes going in the background it's wonderful. You see, I huh. on the weekends since I'm single at the house by myself for another three days. What I end up doing on the weekends because I'm like, damn it, I hate being in the bed alone. I lay down on the couch and I turn on the TV. I can turn on a fucking fireplace on Netflix and just go to bed. Yeah, right. that's true too. I love <laughs> there's stupid shit like that on Netflix that I just love. I absolutely <laughs> love. Um. We we had the the Christmas fireplace going on Netflix last year. That was awesome. Um, but Castlevania, I'm I'm gonna try not to get too spoilery. Um, so it's Castlevania. Dracula's in it, right? Dracula is the fucking star of the show. Right? I he's, hope he's not in it for very long. But holy fuck, does he sell that performance? It's fucking <laughs> awesome. Holy shit, like. It's it's weird because I was expecting, oh, it's good versus evil and Dracula's the evil guy. We've got to kill him because he's a vampire because reasons. No, <laughs> this I'm actually rooting for Dracula to like slaughter all of humanity because of the Whoa. shit that happens within the first like 30 minutes of the episode or I, huh. I, maybe even 10 minutes of the episode. Like I want Dracula to kill off all the humans. It's really, really well done. Um that said, he's the only likable character out of the bunch. The The rest are kind of eh. And then one that's supposed to be your main character, basically. You just fucking hate him. He's just uh, fucking atrocious. You know, at um, first when you were describing this, I'm like, oh, so it's actually good. Maybe I'll look into it a little bit. And now I'm thinking, <sighs> oh, maybe it's not good. So maybe so I won't look into it a little bit. So weird. Tom has explained it that the guy who's really good isn't in it long. And the guy you're going to exactly. hate is the main guy. If Dracula oh. was across the entirety of the first season, I would have loved it. But there's there's just not enough awesome Dracula screen time. Uh, that said, the first season, I struggle to call it a season. It's like four or five episodes long that are 20 to 30 minutes a piece. Like you can blow through this thing in two, two and a half hours easily. It's going to be the new way that they do pilots. Yeah. And I, I think this is good enough to make the cut for a season two, probably not a season three. Um, Mm. It's not bad by any means. And I, I mean, if you're trying to pick a really safe thing to make an animated show off of for for adult audiences, Castlevania is mm-hmm. a really safe pick. Um, there's not a lot of story there to fuck up. I mean, there there yeah. is, but it's it's easy to mold and work with. I would right. say go check it out. At the very least, the first episode is fucking rad. Don't get your hopes up for the rest. Yeah, fair enough. But uh, other than that, that is all I've been playing. Playing? Really playing? I think watching. we went like ninety <laughs> minutes on stuff. <laughs> yes, I I played all of the Netflix Choose Your Own Adventure Castlevanias. Dude, that would God, I'm ready for them to do that. That'd be right? so fun. That would be great. Yeah. So Adam, <laughs> yeah. With the end of your grind, have you been released from Rocket League recently? Have I been released from Rocket Actually, League? Actually, should I probably have, put some bit. context well, to all of that. No, because they updated it again, so now I have to play it constantly. So. Oh Struggle yeah, that's right. Um, the Rock, the Rick and Mortys. <laughs> yes, yes, the there Rick are Ricks and, and there are Mortys, and there are uh, interdimensional fart boosts and spinny yes. vortex wheels, and 
uh, floating head toppers. But the yeah, I've been playing uh, Rocket League. New updates, great. A lot of new stuff. Um, some quality of life stuff. New season. Actually, this weekend is uh, double drop rate. So the drop weight, the drop rate in which you'll get <laughs> items and crates is double, and then there's a double chance to get something painted out of crates or drops. So that means technically a quadruple chance of getting a painted item. So you can uh, double while you're doubled yeah. while you're doubling. Well, because it's Super it's double. a double chance of a drop. God. And if you get a drop, it's gonna, a double chance of paint. So it's a quadruple rate of paints. Guys, I'm going to double over if we keep talking math. Yeah. God damn it, Tom. Josh, <laughs> you're replacing him next week. We're getting rid of him. Yes. See you, Tom. It was nice knowing you. We can deal with no, Kansas. We can deal with Carolina. Seventy-two Netflix connector <laughs> next week. No, we'll we'll deal with Carolina barbecue rather than you. <laughs> oh God. Oh wow. <laughs> and that's, Bivens agrees. That's that's really harsh. Yeah. But what do you think but, um, of the uh, sound boost? Yeah, they uh, redid all the engine sounds, and now you can kind of mix and match whatever you want. So if you're playing you know, the Octane car, you can use the sound from the Dominus car or any of the other sounds. Um, really what you should do is use the sound of the Scarab car, which is that little dorky looking egg shaped car that nobody uses. <laughs> and the sound is just perfect. So it sounds like a... Um, like when you start up a leaf blower. <laughs> oh, God. It yeah, sounds annoying. Me. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's really annoying, actually. But uh, yeah, the update's really nice. I really, uh, I really, you- really got a kick out of the uh, goal explosions. So yeah. my first match I played, I knew that they had changed the hitboxes and stuff on cars. Newsflash, they modern or they standardized some of the hitboxes, so there's not as many different ones. But mm-hmm. they now have gold explosions, so you can customize them. I didn't I knew this was coming. I didn't know it had hit. <laughs> and my very first match, I was playing against someone who had a black market one. And it was like some phasey thing. And it like did this weird shit when it exploded, and instantly I go to did my game just fuck up? <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, what the hell is going on? I, I saw the, uh, the fireworks goal explosion. That looks really nice. cool. I actually they, unlocked one of those. I got super lucky with the crate and really? I got the black market. Um, yeah, I got one. It's called Hellfire. And it uh, explodes in fire with like a fire skull that comes out and roars. It's, it's very... It's very metal. Nice. <laughs> That's awesome. Have you played much of the? Uh, have you played much since the update, Eric? Um, I've played a decent amount. Uh, but the car I play with didn't get. Well, I shouldn't say it like this. The car I'm playing with, the hitbox and all the actual shit that matters didn't change. However, the s- default engine noise is fucking awful. <laughs> like I was thinking to myself, holy shit, they changed the way it sounds. I'm done playing it. Wow. <laughs> it was that bad. <laughs> Damn. I would have preferred the scarabs over the fucking oct- or the Dominus default. The Dominus sound. one just sounds like it's running through a telephone. It's uh, like the, the engine sound is cool. What, but what was that it, again? The quality uh, of said <laughs> <laughs> I don't uh No, no, I don't think so. Okay, sorry, that's more of the uh, scare. <laughs> but either way, this, the new sound I thought was crazy, but goal explosions to me are the takeaway biggest thing of this. Mm-hmm. The goal explosions are awesome. You can get different colors. You can get different effects. Adam and I were playing the other night. He gets the black market one where the skulls bound, or like coming out of the flame at you <laughs> when you score. It's fucking rad. Yeah. I'm really liking it. Um. There's a call out from Bivens in the chat that he's really liking the new cars. They do look awesome. It looks like Formula One cars. I almost forgot about yeah. them because they're crate only and I suck with crates. <laughs> so I haven't yeah, got Yeah, I really want to try those cars. I don't a lot crate. of new stuff in the update. It's it's really good update. I'm I'm a bad gamer. I don't I don't crate. I crate That's for fine. games that I feel that I have gotten more than the money out of. I That's paid true. twenty dollars for Rocket League and I've played it for over a thousand hours. I can buy a few keys. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I, I'm not saying they don't deserve it. I'm just saying, I don't think 
other than like the first couple keys in TF2, I've never actually created. Now that said, that said, I put fuck tons of money into Dota. I was about to say that. No, but instead <laughs> you buy a compendium where you play fucking Plinko for yeah. imaginary points <laughs> to get a goddamn and, curve. And not, not only that, not only that, I buy the compendium, right? Which gives me basically everything I want. Uh, and then I'm like, oh, but I feel bad. I only paid like 15 bucks for this compendium and look at all the shit I got. I'll just throw down 60 more dollars to level up my compendium to the max. I'll just, I'll go ahead and do that. And I'll feel good enough to put in a thousand more hours of Dota. But <laughs> you can't buy a dollar key. No, nope. no, absolutely not. Not, not, not at all. That's, that's Ridiculous. too much for me. It's, it's like <laughs> you go to McDonald's and you buy like literal shit between buns, right? For five bucks. But the moment someone crafts this beautiful, amazing application for your phone, like, please, sir, could I have a dollar? I'm starving to death. You're like, no, <laughs> fuck off. I'm going to go eat my shit buns now. Thank you. And <laughs> newsflash, Tom analogy. is a terrible human being. <laughs> yes, yes, I am. That's, that was a wonderful, wonderful <laughs> monologue. I enjoyed that. God we, should, we should clip that. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, before we move on from Rocket League, uh, Rocket League is the latest X Games esport on ESPN. Did That's you know that insane. <laughs> so I had saw that they were going to X Games. I thought that was really cool. And once again, this is me um, kind of tooting my own horn. I have been calling this Rocket League is what's going to mainstream esports. Yeah, we've we've definitely. definitely so I love seeing this. I, I think it's great. Definitely seventy five thousand dollar prize pool. It'll be streamed on ESPN three. And probably Twitch, I would assume, and other Ooh. services. I'm sorry. Did you say prize pool? I did. Prize pool? No, no. I, that, this is going to sound really weird. That kind of upsets me. What? That so, it's low? No. This is the X Games. This is like the Olympics of weird shit is what the X Games <laughs> is. People, yeah. people you don't get, get prizes for winning X Games. No. Do you know what you get? You get a medal. It's just like the Olympics. Right. And that's in a cash stipend. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 dude. This is just like you know, you're supposed to get a medal and then you can sell it for like five hundred dollars because it's twenty four metal. Someone who's desperate enough to go to the X Games only because there's a prize pool. You go to the X Games because you want to be fucking good. <laughs> no, I, I'm uh, <laughs> I I don't like that being a prize pool for the X Games, but uh, it's really cool to see it there. Huh. I know that sounds really fucking weird. It's just yeah, it's I'm weird. Kinda- it's weird to have, okay, Rocket League's in the X Games. We're going to pay people who win that. But you skateboarder who just did really, really, really fucking good, <laughs> here's your medal. Get out of here. <laughs> I agree I, they I, should get a medal in addition yeah. to their cash stipend. Yeah. You're missing my no, point, I, damn it. I think they need to give the skateboarders money, too. Yes. Everyone gets money. <laughs> You get Everyone. a cash prize, and you get a cash prize. Everybody gets cash <laughs> prize. Look under your controller. <laughs> Everybody, oh, turn God. your skateboards around. Except that one guy who uses a keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're a douche. Get out of here. Wow. So oh. outside of Rocket League, Adam. Yeah. yeah you been yeah, doing anything else fun? I have. So last weekend we did a community game thing, postcast community games, and we played Counter Strike Global Offensive Arms Race, and that was a lot of fun. I have to say, I'm I'm not a Counter Strike guy. I don't really like Counter Strike, but Arms Race is a lot of fun, and Arms Race with friends is a lot of fun. Yes, so. I owned the first round, and then every time after yeah, that, <laughs> just fucking Irk and someone else yeah. just kept. They had my goddamn number. So, um, just quick shout out. Yes, uh, that was our first ever community cast game. Afterwards, CS:GO mm-hmm. went great, badass time. Everyone in Discord just talking mad shit. For those <laughs> of you who are interested, we will be doing it again tonight. Golf with friends immediately. F- golf with your friends immediately golf after the friends. cast. Uh, we'll be putting the Discord link in the chat. Everyone's welcome to join to hit golf balls and bitch at each other. So please join. It'll be a so blast. much bitching. mostly mostly just bitch at each other, but really we will occasionally hit a golf ball. There's there's an entire stage dedicated to um, the purging of anyone who likes Carolina barbecue. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Yes, there is. Right. This is why we so, chose the game. So we will have one hole dedicated for Josh, and we will <laughs> like put a thing seal over the hole so he just can never move from. Yes. 
Yes, exactly. <laughs> it's the Carolina now, handicap. I'm, I'm looking forward to playing this game though because I haven't played it yet. I bought it today, actually. So mm-hmm. it it should be fun. Um, and I, we just had a community request. I guess we will probably be playing Collision on, so we will find out what this is all about. <laughs> so Total War okay. will start in T minus an hour. Oh God. <laughs> oh god this is gonna be fantastic collision is going to be a shit show oh god <laughs> but adam so yeah. there has been um an interesting development for you that normally you see as piracy but in your case i think it's kind of okay yeah, so I, what's I this like new game yeah, yeah. old game you've been getting into this this new old game yes it's uh it's one i hold deep into my heart it is probably the most nostalgia i have for any game ever and that is the original Metal Gear Solid for the PlayStation 1. And I'm playing it on my PC yes. without an emulator. Oh, so, what? Yeah. The, some guy on Reddit uh, was frustrated because there's no way to play Metal Gear Solid on a modern PC without using an emulator. So he made a installable and uh, installable executable executable and you can install metal gear solid on your pc and it has controller support and you can play it and i have been playing it (laughs) so is this just like he took what would be an emulator and rom and wrapped it as a standalone or did did he remake it no i see i don't know enough about this kind of stuff to really describe what he did it's something to do with actually going into the game engine and like, I don't know. I really don't know how it all works, but I would like to look that up and maybe talk about that more. But is it visually enhanced at all? Or does this look like nope. you're playing a PS one on the computer? It just looks like you're playing a PS one on the computer. Um, it might be, I mean, the aspect ratio looked fine on the widescreen monitor. So I'm assuming, and there's like some, uh, resolution settings and the graphics options okay so there so there is that so he Um, probably went in and just kind of opened the viewport a little bit to give you a wider range and then just left mm -hmm. everything as is yeah and then there's controller support you can actually pick your key binds and stuff so that's cool um but yeah i started that and i will justify that by saying i also own metal gear solid one on my playstation 3 which i was too lazy to hook up and i also own a (laughs) physical copy of Metal Gear Solid somewhere. <laughs> uh, I haven't seen it in a while, but it's probably packed up in the box still. You know, I I get that companies want to resell you the same game 27 times. I, I get mm-hmm. it. I really do. But I don't view it as piracy if I've got Super Mario Brothers 3 on a shelf and Super Mario Brothers 3 on a Raspberry Pi. Well, I, I get I get that legally and technically it is copyright infringement. No, but I, think I that sucks. I okay. I honestly believe that this falls because I actually went over some of this in college. I don't think that is because you're as long as you don't use both at the same time, what you're doing is shifting the rights. Well, because uh, that, that is that works in also the video media where you can have a digital copy of a movie, and as long as you own the physical and don't use both at the same time, it is actually not infringement. But that's. That's fair use, which is a defense to copyright infringement. It's not uh, a pass and it's not a whiteout. No, 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 no. A defense to copyright infringement is the same as saying driving under the speed limit to defense for a speeding ticket. No, 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 no. Like literally by the law, fair use is a defense strategy. It is not written into the law that way. This isn't under fair use. This is under whenever VCRs came, when people would record stuff off a of TV to watch it later. This is when these laws came in. We're, we're going to have to check because I completely believe, because otherwise, otherwise, you know, if I wanted to put, because Nintendo has huge problems with this, the homebrew channel on my Wii and load up all my NES ROMs of the shit I have sitting on the shelf that I've, you know, bought Ocarina of Time six or seven times, but I wanted to play those on a different system that's still copyright infringement. We'll have to look up the law. We'll have to, we'll have to well, see the exact because wording that's, of it. Because that's not quite the same because you're also doing the breaking of the system bullshit, which is also a gray area. It's it kind of, sort of. So. Either way, either way. Yeah, table. Either way. Later. <laughs> anyway. <clears throat> Yes, so, yeah, Adam's been, been playing Metal Gear playing Solid, some, uh, and Tom and I are going to bitch about other stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Metal Gear? Um, I'm actually thinking Snake! about streaming that at some point. 
since it's actually a PC game now, I can stream it on Twitch without a capture card. Do so it. I might be doing that. I might start over and, and, and stream some of that. You totally should because yeah. I've never played any Metal Gear. None at all? Ever. Wait, really? None. I'll tell you what. Some How? of those games are really good yeah. without the nostalgia aspect. Metal Gear Solid 3 is fucking amazing. It is the mm. best of like 60s spy movie camp. So I remember <laughs> I was at a post high school party where her brother woke up in the morning when everyone else was passed out on the floor and he was playing Snake Eater, I think, when you start in like a swamp. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Three. So that's the most gameplay of one I've seen since like maybe four because four was a movie. Metal oh, Gear Solid yeah. 1 is amazing on so many levels. It had so many firsts in the video game industry. I mean, Psycho Mantis is in, in several, like, best of moments in all of gaming because of just the way it fucks with the person on the other side of the controller. <laughs> Breaking the fourth wall is kind of Kojima's thing because, you know, he basically invented the best ways to do it. Um, using the rumble features on the PlayStation to move your controller in a pattern on your table that was fucking <laughs> ridiculous. You yeah. know, saying, oh, I see you like Spyro the Dragon. Like it, reading your memory card saves. Fucking yeah. shit like that. It yeah. was nuts. And it freaked you the fuck out as a kid. So I, rem then, I remember hearing but, about that. And Brett, one of our friends, had one of the best stories where I think he rented the game. And on one of the things, there's a code that you're supposed to get off the back of the case. Yes. And at the rental place, they give you the shitty ass fucking case so he can never <laughs> oh get god. past it. Oh my god. Yeah. Okay. So I've got a story. Well, I, I bought twin. Yeah. So I, I bought twin stakes um, at, as a kid for the GameCube, which is Metal Gear Solid 1, but recreated with better graphics and everything. Um, so. That guy, before he dies, says, oh, you know, call, call Meryl. Her, her n number should be on the back of the package. And I'm looking at literally every single box, every single crate, every single rectangular object that could be construed as a package for fucking numbers. And I can't find shit. This goes on for an hour and a half before I take the game case and I throw it across the room because I'm an angry child. <laughs> and it lands backside up. And I see Meryl's Kodak number. Holy <laughs> fucking shit, Kojima. You magnificent piece of shit. It was wonderful. But you can get it in the game by talking to somebody enough times, right? I, I think that's how it worked. I, all I know is I threw a game case and Kojima blew my little kid mind. You see, I love <laughs> things like that for like uh, Jurassic Park for the Sega, not the NES abortion, mm -hmm. but for the Sega. Yeah. Um, they actually gave you the code in the manual to get to the last level in the area where they showed you how to enter the codes to get to levels. Huh. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. That's nice. And that level was a bitch. And it was the only way I ever got to that level because that game was hard as shit. Yes, it was. You know, we should do like a retro cast where we play only the most difficult fucking games. Battletoads, oh, Jurassic Park on the Genesis. Ninja Turtles for the NES. Lion King. Lion King. Lion King. Yeah. <laughs> And Manus. if I remember right, the level on the Lion King was actually created to get people to die. Yes. Yes, it was. Yeah. They, uh, so for those of you who don't know, we're going to tangent a little bit here and go into a 72 <laughs> pin connector retro history lesson uh, in the like a couple levels into Lion King uh, on the SNES and Genesis. There was this level that was almost impossible. It was fucking difficult and no one could get past it. It was like one of the biggest challenges in the game. And the reason they did that is video game companies absolutely hated rental places. They hated Blockbuster. They hated the mom and pop video shops because you could rent a game for a couple days, beat it, and never buy it. So they decided to basically make a level to kill off everyone who rented the game. <laughs> so then unless you were like the elite of elite, it would take you days to beat it. Yep. And for those of you who don't know what we're talking about, it involves... Giraffe heads flipping and monkeys throwing you across the screen. Oh my god, it was so fucking terrible. It was uh, awful. Flashbacks. Yes. So, so there was there's also there's yeah. a YouTube video I was watching where uh the animators in that game didn't want you to be able to change your jump midair because they said that's unrealistic. A lion could never jump like that. While being thrown from a monkey, it's illegal yeah. to or it's the, They were Disney animators, and they were like, no, we can't have them change direction because it just doesn't look right. You can't animate that properly. And the game developer's <laughs> like, guys, no, you're not making a movie. Please, please. 
you have to let them change directions mid jump. Yes, because everything about Disney animation is so real. <laughs> <sighs> wow. But yeah, so, that's, uh, uh, that's all I've been playing. Back to the games. Yes, video games. For now. For Eric. now. Eric, you've been playing video games. Let's hear it. Yeah, I have. Hasn't been a whole lot of new stuff. Um, did a little bit of Rocket League, obviously, the season end stuff. The grind's over, so it's a lot more passive now. Just checking out the new shit. Um, we all did CSGO. Uh, one nice big thing I want to pull or talk about is when Tom and I were doing VR, we went back to a game that we once loved and played a lot of called mm-hmm. Hover Junkers. And I remember you telling us about that. This game is a game to me that sold the vibe because it was it got around the idea that in virtual reality, there's always the disconnect because you can't walk. So Hover Junkers was the concept of you're on a hovercraft and you're steering this hovercraft while dodging around on it and putting up structures on it to dodge in. So Mm. you were always in this confined space in the game and in your room. So you were able to fully immerse. This game was awesome. There was lobbies all the time. You go in, it's a first person shooter. Great. Mm -hmm. We played and there was literally one person on (laughs) one person. (laughs) One other guy. (laughs) One other guy. What's up other guy? So this, and this this is a game that like even you know like on a Tuesday fucking night was jam packed with people, mm-hmm. but there there was just no one. And you would see occasionally like someone would come in and be looking for a game because they'd show up on the online players list and like holy mm-hmm. shit, there's two people here and they just log out. And oh, that's wow. that's the biggest issue is if you don't have like a minimum number to fill your board in Hover Junkers, no one's gonna stick around to make a, a full group. Yeah, it was really fucking rough. Really, really rough. Because that game, the shooting mechanic's great. The locomotion mechanic is great. It's just, in VR, if you have a badass game and its main focus is multiplayer, you're screwed. There is no way to survive in VR currently as a multiplayer exclusive game. What what happened that this game dropped off so heavily if it was the game to play back then. So the way VR works right now is it's kind of like B mentality where everyone hovers together over what's the current cool thing. Everyone Mm -hmm. goes there and the VR community is so small that what little remains, it's still the same with current gaming. I mean, current Mm -hmm. gaming, there's still some people that hang back and play halo three. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. that that current gaming community is so large that when 0.5 percent stay back, it's still enough to play. And and the barrier right, to okay. entry to you know playing Halo through online is so low, right? Mm-hmm. You have to have an older console that doesn't cost a whole lot of money and an mm-hmm. internet connection and a headset, and you're done. But for yeah. a VR rig, you know the barrier to entry is a gaming computer of at least a thousand dollars. Um, right. I, I well, put, not put, anymore. I think now you could probably get around with a six, seven hundred dollar bill to get entry. Okay. Not, not smooth, okay. yeah, but to, good to, to get entry. And then, you know, a Vive, which was what, six hundred, seven hundred bucks, eight hundred on release. And it's seven hundred now, I think. Yeah. So it's it's not really something you can just jump into. Hey, I think I'm going to, you know, do VR games today. Uh, it it in, involves a pretty significant monetary investment and time investment to get this shit set up i mean so you've got sensors bolted to your wall right there's some setup time involved there it's it's not the plug and play of halo 3 and i think that's why you're getting the hive mentality when it comes to online games is because there's just the player base is too thin to sustain anything and that's where i think if this was a player base of even a half a million I think that games like Cover Junker and Battle Dome would be okay because those are both really good first person shooters. There's just not enough player base. Yeah. And that's that's what's killing it right now. So I think I'm going to try. I just yeah. bought a uh, a new VR game the other day on the Steam sale. Uh, and I think I'm going to stream that hopefully this week. But we'll see. Really? Cuz I've got I've got people in town. Um I wish I knew the name. I keep forgetting the name because it's it's weird and it's not something that's very popular. Well, when you get the name, we'll get back to. Yeah. But 
other things I've been playing has been Battlegrounds. And I do want to mm. call out for Battlegrounds is screenshots have been released for the new map. Yay! And I think this new map, people are going to be able to blend in a little better because it's deserts. Mm-hmm. And I really, really am looking forward to having some different maps. Yes. Like, absolutely. honestly, this kind of game, I think it'd be fun if it was purely procedural. And while everyone's loading into the game, you can view the map to kind of plan out your stuff ahead of time. Mm -hmm. Because I think like, okay, let's call it this way. We already have a spot that we call our normal drop. Mm -hmm. That's kind of dull to me. I like the idea of always being fresh, always being new. It's part of the stuff that gets me into the roguelikes. Right. I, I can definitely see that. But there's also, I like knowing the map a little bit because it does make the strategy a little bit more present. I would agree with that. And I still think the strategy would be there otherwise. It's just you would have to learn to read the map better. Mm. I, I think in something like a first-person shooter, you almost have to have different maps. Um, in, a, in a game like Dota or League of Legends, which is probably a bad example because they've got different maps. Um, not really, but it, no, it's aesthetically. They change the map every once in a while, but it's always the same. No, they do have different maps. They've got 3v3s, they've got 5v5s, they've got different lane. Are you, on, are you talking League or are you talking MOBA as a whole? No, League. Oh, okay, 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 I won't go there. I don't yeah. know that, yeah. Um, so, but Dota, Dota's got you know, one map that gets reskinned, essentially. Uh, and the reason that stays alive is because it's not the map that gives you the variables. It's the characters and the abilities and the items. And with the first person shooter, you've got a whole lot less variables to work with. So a map becomes a big part of how you play the game. I, it, I think, it really does. I think that's why you needed this in battlegrounds uh, at some point. Yeah. And I think it adds a lot of freshness to it. A whole lot, but um, I'm looking forward to that. But there was one other thing I was doing just a tad bit of towards the end of the week. Um, so we're trying to do the little bit more community play with the people. Um, I have started up a, um, 72 PC Terraria server. And outside of uh, when we're casting, this server will be up 24 by seven. So even nice. when we're doing golf with friend or golf with your friends, if you don't want to play the 72 PC server will be up. If you want the deets but- for it, get on our discord, reach out to me and you will get the details. So Terraria has been out for quite a while, and if if you played the game a long time ago and enjoyed it, and then stopped or you beat it or whatever, they've got they've had some pretty major updates not that long ago. So there might be a lot more new stuff that you haven't seen yet if you haven't played it in a while. So if if it's still interesting to you, there's definitely more content to discover. Yes, um, we had about a server where we had about ten people playing it we had probably at least two to three people on at all times and <laughs> that was a lot of fun that was, this was that a was year a ago time. yeah and there's new shit now that i didn't see at that point hmm. mm-hmm. this is a game that the developer said he was done with i think what four years ago <laughs> right yeah. and i feel bad because this is when starbound started because everyone's like oh terraria is done here's starbound they're taking what terraria did and making it better And then it just felt like the Terraria devs are like, you know what? Fuck this guy. He's trying to cash in on us. Here's a new update. (laughs) Here's a giant new update with a whole new end game and And a bunch of items and stuff. Exactly. They just completely ate Starbound's breakfast because Terraria, I've never played Starbound from people I know have played both. Terraria tends to sound like it is superior game. It's just Starbound has the planet shit, which is really fucking cool. Yeah. So the uh, the VR game that I will hopefully be playing this week is uh, Pavlov VR, and it looks to be uh, you know kind of the answer to what would Counter Strike be in VR. Um, hmm. So we'll have to see. Uh, it's it's with VR, I have to consistently break my no early access titles rule because <laughs> yeah, it's all early access. Because everything Literally, is early access. <laughs> VR itself is early access. Yeah. Um, so everything is fairly alpha quality. I haven't seen anything mm-hmm. too, too polished in VR, except for the lab, which Valve put yeah. out. Yeah. In- well, at first player experiences, I think, are where or first player. Holy shit. One player experiences, I think, are the only thing that are going to be well polished. 
because those are from development teams who aren't trying to cash in because you don't cash in in the video game market going for single player experiences. Um, it depends. It depends. So something like the blue, I feel like was a bit of a cash in because there's almost no content there. You sit underwater and look at pretty things and it's single player only. And it was like 20 bucks or something. Okay. Okay. I let, let me rephrase this after the initial VR push. <laughs> okay. All right. You there don't you go. cash in on there anything you go. else. Yeah. Yeah. Everything. And if you could sit in the middle of a room and watch paint dry in VR, someone sold it for $5. Yeah. <laughs> I, I bought that. I mean, yeah. Paint dry VR is possibly the best game on the Vive today. But so it, realistic. It is. It really is. It dries in real time. <laughs> as cool as some of this VR tech is, I will say this real quick. Some of the best games are still the free stuff. You have the labs from uh, Vive, or Vive, holy shit, from Valve. It's awesome. They have the whole slingshot game, which is great. They got archery mm-hmm. defense. It's a lot of fun, different shit. It's the great, hey, you want to see what VR is about? Jump in here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I I mean, as much as I complain about, you know, the quality of the stuff, it's, I fully understand this is alpha level technology. We are on, you know, the bleeding edge again of trying to launch a VR again and hopefully <laughs> not watching it fail again. Um, yeah. But the thing is, I, I don't with- feel like I've wasted my money with the Vive. What's hard is with current game dev, you can get people that don't know math and they can make a video game. Yes. When you get to VR, physics are a huge part of the game. <laughs> like I've made a little game, me and my buddy, um, he Vosbeck, we made a little VR thing where you had different hoops and you were throwing the balls through the hoops to make them. And for VR... I mean, you have to make fucking vectors. You have to do matrices. You have to know how the math works. I accidentally put a sign wrong. And when I went to throw the ball, the thing fucking skyrocketed behind me. (laughs) I mean, you have, that's what's really hurting VR is. I understand that big game devs sometimes look down upon the simple makers, but the simple makers are what help bring on so many different game types. Yes. And VR hasn't done it yet. And I don't know when they'll be able to do it because they have to find a system that can simplify the math. But that's a really fucking complex system. There, there are a class of, uh, of gamers out there that look down upon anything made with Game Maker. Uh, mm. And I, I just want to say that some of the best games I've played were stupid, oh shitty God. little RPGs made in Game Maker. Correct me if I'm wrong, Adam, but I believe um, Undertale was Game Maker. Um, Undertale I, I, might have been Game Maker. Uh, definitely, Risk of Rain was Game Maker. Risk of Rain was excellent. Yes, so Risk and of I, Rain. Um, Outline Miami, Miami was of uh, Game Maker, I think. To the Moon, like even even yeah. what you would consider, you know, a non-professional shitty little engine can make fucking rad games. It's it's about yeah. the content you're creating, not the tools you're using. Yes, mm-hmm. and that's where though, still with VR, VR needs better tooling. It yes. Does. Well, because the tooling's hard. Yes. Unity yeah. is getting better. Unity is getting much better. Yes. And I was using Unity. And even yeah. then, I was dealing with vectors and I was dealing yeah. with actual physics equations. Like they, they are constantly yeah. updating the VR tooling in Unity. And it's it's getting better all the time. But it is still too hard. If I want to put a ball on a table and pick it up with my Vive controller and throw it across the room, that shouldn't take anything except attach physics to object. Um, th- to a degree, yes. To a degree, yes. But here's the thing. You have to start understanding like, okay, how much resistance does this object have versus this object? How right. much does it bounce? How much yeah. is it actually going to transfer? What rate do I transfer? Because your hand's moving substantially faster than what you actually want that ball to go. If you right. want it to be... VR physics are not real because right. you have to nerf the speed of which things leave your hand. My very first air in VR was to leave the things real and holy fuck, you never want to do that. <laughs> too heavy or too light? Too light. Okay. Things sail. Oh. <laughs> Things go. No, that's what you need to do. You need to make the VR Hulk simulator and leave the physics all default. Yeah. You, you want to move a table? Boom. Oh, shit. It's through the wall. <laughs> because of the rate that your hand's moving compared mm-hmm. to what it actually represents in the game, you would have to make such a huge scale game to get that right. Yeah. But, so, to, so to sum everything up, if you're going to develop for VR, uh, brush up on those times tables a little bit or something. You know? Yeah. <laughs> <Just> <laughs> get a little physics, familiar with numbers. Do some basic physics and you'll be good. 
Yeah. Um, but there is one more thing I want to get at real quick. Um, so I haven't been playing this. I will be getting back to it. Horizon mm-hmm. Zero Dawn has just received a new game plus mode with cool. added difficulty. Oh, shit. So this, as of right now, is probably my game of the year. And I will be going back to that and we'll probably be streaming the shit out of that because god Definitely damn, that game's good. <laughs> so fucking good. Um, Definitely stream it. And I'll be getting the new DLC that I don't know a whole lot about, which is fun. I did this with Nier and I'm going to do this with this DLC. I knew Nier was good and that's all I knew. So I jumped into Nier without knowing the damn thing about the game. I've never even seen gameplay footage. So good. That's the best way to do it's it. It's so refreshing. Mo- not just games, movies, anything. If you just go in it completely blind and it ends up being something incredible, that is just, that's such a special moment. Uh, avoiding trailers is wonderful. There needs to be, and there might be, like a Chrome extension for Metacritic that blacks uh. out all of the text <laughs> and just gives you a number. Yeah. So you go, yeah. you get box art, number. So, okay, I'll get that one. I was actually do uh, Chris and I were my buddy Chris, not not you, Protorex, not yeah, not you, but um, the other one, my other buddy back in uh, Columbus Dayton area, um, we would get bored. He would come over, we'd watch some Netflix, and we would just randomly choose movies, and that has been some of the best shit ever. It's just like that looks cool. It's got a decent rating. Go. You don't know what you're getting. A lot of times, it's pretty cool. But yeah, so I'll be probably streaming some of that um, a little bit towards the end of this week. Uh, my mm-hmm. midweek's going to be kind of crazy, so you won't be seeing me on stream as much. But hopefully these two guys will be picking up. And I think we're going to be getting Josh on stream. Don't know if he's getting on the next couple weeks, but within a month or so, you'll probably see Josh on some of our streams here too, which will be nice. <laughs> okay i've been ranting i feel that i've been talking way too much <laughs> i think we've this has been uh, a pretty ranty podcast for all of us um uh, so i think that's pretty much all we've been playing right guys any of you guys been doing anything uh, else i think that pretty much wraps it up did we talk about dark souls i don't think we've talked about dark souls tom shut up get out of here we'll <laughs> no, talk about yeah, that when stop. you start playing it damn it <laughs> keep your eyes out for those of you who care tom and josh will be doing a uh, dark souls 3 co-op stream all the way through drink up because we talked about dark souls but that's it dark souls yep. <laughs> um we did have a little bit of news um this will probably be quick on a few of them uh, quick update over Watch League. We've been hinting at this the last couple of weeks. Some official news dropped via ESPN that nice. there are now officially six teams in the Overwatch League. Four in America, cool. two in Los Angeles, one in New York, one in Boston, and two abroad. I th- want to say there were both Asian teams, but I can't remember. Hmm. Uh, one of the teams is owned by Robert Kraft, who is the owner of the New England Patriots, so he'll have the Boston team. The other one is owned by the guy who owns the New York Mets. The other four are going to be owned by traditional esports organizations. So it's going to be a friendly mix of both. So it, to me, this was nothing more than yes, they're actually getting shit going. Okay. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Side note, you mentioned that it came from ESPN of all places. They've been doing a pretty good job of covering esports. I've, yes. I've definitely seen a lot of articles online and they've been showing some stuff on some of the ESPN channels. So that's, that's cool to see. I think they're trying to maintain relevance with those damn millennials. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so about four years ago, they made a point that yes, we are going to at least acknowledge it. Um, they bought, damn it. Well, I can't remember the company. Someone will probably chime in in chat, but they mm-hmm. bought a company who was an esports company. I don't, wasn't MLG, oh. but it was someone. But either way, they've been covering a shit ton of League of Legends and a good bit of CSGO. But they have League of Legends. They did cover some Dota, too. They have Dota on ESPN, the championship. But, I mean, on their website, they have a lot of that. They have all the tournament schedules for League of Legends, CSGO, and Dota. So, yes, to Adam's point, they are really stepping up their esports. A shit ton. Definitely. Um, when it comes to esports, Dota 2 had a big announcement. Valve is officially stopping their majors. So for those of you who are not quite sure what that means, they've had what's known as the Dota International every year. This is going to be the sixth year. Um, for the last two... Seventh? Seventh? Seventh. 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 Okay. Lost Started track. in 2011. Okay. So this will be the sixth year. 
11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 17. I'm, I'm fucking dumb. Seventh year math. Weren't we um, just telling people to so, be educated on math? Yeah, to yeah so VR? about that. I suck with addition. <laughs> there's, there's probably a reason those vectors were mixed. Or <laughs> give me differentials and integrals. I'm good. Don't give me okay, fucking Okay, professional math. programmer. Tell us more about simple addition. But um, yes, tell us because I'm not one of those either. Fuck off. Um, <laughs> however, they're the majors were initially going to be three every year and then it got dropped to two but these were also mm -hmm. seen as possible qualifiers for the international mm -hmm. um dota's officially renouncing these they're done with them and instead what they're doing is valve is going to sponsor smaller tournaments and double up on the cash pool for those tournaments if a cat but they have requirements of like they have to have a land final and stuff like this uh -huh. So it's Valve backing out of this. We want to have four big tournaments a year and actually sponsoring up the smaller tournaments. I, I think the bigger thing here to look at is it's it's Valve being the it's saying, hey, we're not going to be Blizzard. So Blizzard for Overwatch, they're they're going to you know control everything from the top down, from from mm -hmm. team management to majors to tournaments. Everything in Overwatch is going to be managed by blizzard and and they like to control everything and that's not necessarily a bad thing it's just a different management style valve mm -hmm. has always played very fast and loose with everything so one of the big complaints is that uh you know dota 2 stars are saying well we don't really care about mlg we don't really care about you know summit or dream league or uh you know any any of these other you know small fry tournaments because we're preparing for kiev we're preparing for shanghai we're preparing mm -hmm. for whatever, you know, the next tournament Valve is throwing, and that's where we're going to be. And all these other, you know, tinier venues are getting overshadowed by the fact that Valve isn't running the international every year. They're running the international right. and three mini internationals every year. Uh, and yeah. Valve said, OK, yeah, I guess we are taking the spotlight a bit too much here. We want Dota to be organic. Let's mm -hmm. take a step back. We'll run the international. But. You know, we're not we don't want the money to go away. So here, you know, MLG, uh, Dream League, Summit, you know, all you guys take a pile of money, add it to your prize pool, and we'll just pick random tournaments that people are hyped for it. I call them qualifiers for TI. That's really cool. It's really dumb to me. Really? Why dumb. back out? So think of it this way. NFL. NFL controls everything under the NFL. Valve doesn't want to. Valve is a 300 person company. They don't want to run the NFL. No, Valve instead tries to run the entire video game industry, but they can't deal with some <laughs> tournaments. So they, they so, can't, though. They can't, though, because they even got rid of Greenlight. And the only approval process you have to get on Steam today is you pay 100 bucks. Yes, yeah, no, I understand. Valve, <laughs> Valve is in the business of getting out of trying to manage this stuff. I understand, but that yeah. is a... If you want to keep a high-quality product, you try to control as much of it as possible and not have as much be random. That didn't work for Valve, though, right? Because they were outsourcing a decent chunk of the production of these majors. Do you remember all the shit around the Shanghai Major? That was one of the worst war on worst produced things I have ever seen on television or online ever. Yeah, and it they was canned them. trash. Yeah, and the whole company got fired. So, mm -hmm. you know, those tournaments, and if they end up being shit tournaments, do you think Valve's going to give them more money next year? Do you think the fans are going to watch it when the casters and players are complaining about all the shit that happened at Tournament X? No, it, it, the, the shit will get washed away just like it does on Steam. Yes, but at this point, though, Valve, instead of backing something that they can control themselves or saying like, yeah, we'll partner with you. Yeah, we'll partner with you. Yeah, we'll partner with you. Who cares what you do? We're just going to partner with you. I'm, I'm sure well, it if a on tournament how much money they're throwing at it, too. Are they just adding to the prize pool or are they actually giving money to the organizations to run the thing? They said they're going to because... sponsor it and they're going to okay. double up the prize pool. So okay. the, the, it's just different management styles. So where Blizzard wants right. to control everything in their eSport from the top down, Valve has always been very laissez-faire, and the, the majors kind of drowned out everything else that was happening in the Dota 2 scene. Why should they care? Because they don't want to be the NFL. They just want to be a game developer that makes shit tons of money no, no, on no, no, Dota. No. But okay, <laughs> NFL aside, why should they care if other tournaments are not working? That does not bother them. 
They're trying and they're failing, but they are failing because the, they uh, Valve is I, doing right. No, no. The only I, reason the smaller tournaments die against Valve is because Valve has you know spare billions of dollars to throw at these things and say, hey, yeah, million dollar prize pool. We'll throw six million over here. We'll give you twelve million dollars over here for this <laughs> tiny tournament. Who cares? It's a tournament. Go have fun. And these other guys are like, but dude. We had a really great tournament with really great people, and we've only got five hundred thousand dollars for a prize pool. Mm -hmm. We can't compete for the eyeballs when I, there's when you're throwing out giant numbers like that. Valve is drowning yeah. the Dota two I, scene. But you know what that I does? It consolidates. Look at the okay. I'm going to give you an example. You may not fully grasp the NBA season back in 2011, 2012 was shortened by a strike. During that, they had some of the best numbers they had because there was less games to pay attention to. Therefore, the total product did better. So, so uh, Dota yeah, 2 uh, has been canceled and there will be three games <laughs> played this year. All I of them by Pub Trash. <laughs> from, from Valve's perspective, though, I think they're seeing it as a win-win. They can both... You know, lessen the involve their own involvement in having to organize all these things, and they're taking these other places and just saying, "Here's a bunch of money. Now you do it," and it's a win-win because these all all of these companies are now they're going to like inherit all of that. You know, they're going to get the best teams because those best teams aren't too busy preparing for the major. I, and I those think, things are going to be more legitimate. Those things are going to increase their production value, and and, and it's going to be. Is it going to be more hopefully. legitimate, or is it going to spread the community so much to where no individual tournament is actually going to be as good as the majors were? I don't think that's going to be the case because even before the majors, we had some really rad independent run tournaments that were mm -hmm. big fucking deals because all the big players were there. Right. TI was still like the giant tournament, right? It was the World Series of Dota, but you still got great tournaments before the majors. Yes. But at that point, you were talking just one big tournament. The idea is you can over dilute. You can do that. Yeah. Absolutely. By not actually it just depends guiding on how many. By not guiding the eyes to say this is the important stuff, mm -hmm. you might risk ruining people by them catching on to things that aren't the good stuff. Right, but you but do did they release how many different tournaments they're going to be giving money to and sponsoring? Because if they picked a number that's small enough to kind of spread out and get get everybody interested, but not too many that the dilutes it too much. They're going to be yeah. giving money to $100,000 prize pools and $500,000 prize pools. Okay, so how many tournaments does that equate? They did not say the number. So, they just so said that, that. That said, in the small amount of money that $100,000 is, right, I can't throw a shitty, fucking awful tournament for $100,000 because I don't have it. I can throw a tournament for 10 bucks. Right, but Valve's not going to sponsor you. No, That's all, the difference. You know Valve's only stipulation is to have a LAN finals. Okay. That's so, it. So all I have to do is throw like I'm 20 sure switches in a room. That's okay. I'm, we'll I'm do sure it. I'm sure there's a, a little bit more of a screening process. We, we are, no, we no, are I, announcing I, it here today. <laughs> the first ever 72 pin connector Dota 2 major. We're hosting it right here in this room. Well, this house. We'll <laughs> With, do this house. No, no. In this yes. room, we've got that three seats room. they're going fast there is one ticket left because that seat is unsat do i hear five dollars <laughs> crickets do i hear ten dollars come on chat room come on <laughs> yeah so anyway i think that's enough of esports um we'll get we'll get off that for now we'll, we'll <laughs> next week for Before sure before it we'll gets be back. too heated between you two Yes, Jesus. as always. Okay, anyway. Um, so there's been a trailer, pre-launch trailer for a new game. Um, a new game very much in the spirit of old games. It's as a new Tez, old game. It's yes. going to be a side-scrolling beat-em-up with some really old slash modern art style. I would call yeah, it very so, modern. So this game has been in development for a really long time. I remember seeing old gameplay footage of this multiple years ago. So it's yes. cool to see that it's finally getting a release date. I would call this, I'm very excited for the look of this. I would call this modern in the same sense as Cuphead looks modern, where they take kind of an old or simple aesthetic and make it look really good and really fucking smooth. 
So yeah. it's like almost, I think the easiest way to describe it is stick figures, beat em ups. I mean, is, is that doing it justice? Yeah, kind of. I mean, it's not quite as that, it's not quite that simplistic, but it's definitely, it's got like a black and white aesthetic, uh, a lot of gray, but then your, your main character is full on black. So it stands out. And then you've got the color red for blood, but that's pretty much it. So it's sort of, sort of monochrome, but it looks really cool. It, it looks, I don't know how I'm going to feel about the gameplay because it does look like your standard 2d beat em up. Um, I, I don't see anything like crazy or different about it. It looks smooth. Mm-hmm. It looks fun. The aesthetic yeah. is the only thing that sticks out to me. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. It's, it's fucking beautiful. Oh my God. So uh, as <laughs> Tez go to YouTube, look up their trailer. Oh my God. It looks like they, they tried to do like uh, ancient Aztec inspired artwork, but mm-hmm. in a modern form. It's absolutely gorgeous. It makes me think of the old uh, castle defense with uh, stick figures when you're picking them up and flicking them around. It makes mm-hmm. me think of that a little yep. bit. If anyone remembers that old Flash game. <laughs> yeah, I went so, there. So apparently a couple of quotes from developers. So basically they're designing the game to feel like an arcade game with you know not a whole lot of tutorials. And one of their goals was to empower people to feel like a badass in quotation marks <laughs> and nice. they wanted they wanted like a beat em up that has action like god of war or devil may cry but lack the super tedious elements between fights so this should be a pretty fast paced kind of constant you know onslaught of beat em up badassery <laughs> so i don't know about you guys when it comes to beat em ups i have to play with someone like the last beat em up i enjoyed was castle crashers playing four people all in the same room online doesn't work the same i mean to me it's like it's a couch thing it's, yeah. you're sitting together you're playing through it together you're grinding together mm-hmm. with one exception don't even say it because everyone says it and it's fucking wrong if you go back it's streets of rage which one Two. no See, it's <laughs> it's I, good, but I mean, it's not as good as we idolize it as. I I can no, but I replay this like every quarter. I I go through Streets of Rage two, and it's still fucking great. You got low standards. It's you see, you don't have to play couch co op with Streets of Rage because it's you and you're dancing because it's Streets of Rage, and oh my god, that soundtrack. Okay, who do you play as? <sighs> Usually. Depends on my mood. There's one right answer. <laughs> Skate? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Only right yeah. answer. I don't know, Adam. You a Streets of Rage 2 guy? I've never played it. Uh, what? Never um, played it. We'll fix that. <laughs> well, and when you do play, just remember Sorry, Tom's everybody. answer was right. Oh, also, yeah. Womp TC. Hmm? Yeah. Womp anyway. TC. Well, enough with side scroll and beat em ups because fuck you, Tom. Um,. GTA, we kind of hinted at data miners found out that there is more to the mystery that Tom has always alluded to because I can never remember the name of it. But <laughs> Mount Chiliad mystery. They have yes. officially figured out what it takes to spawn the new part of it. Mystery. And someone mystery. actually went mystery. through organically and spawned it. And now there is a new thing where you're running some guns or something. But there's now an alien crash in the game with aliens. aliens. They actually have put aliens in the game. Yes. So from what I understood from this article, they found all this stuff. But the, the actual mission itself isn't necessarily complete. So it might seem kind of underwhelming, like all this for just that. But I think there's probably more to it. Okay, I'm glad you dug into it because that was going to be my next takeaway is I watched the video of this and the whole time Uh, thinking, really? We've waited fucking, what, four years for this? (laughs) This is garbage. I I maintain that there is something in, I I will be totally wrong and I will get called Mm -hmm. out on this in a year. There is something hidden in GTA 5. There always has been. It wasn't put there by an update and we haven't found it yet. Well, I can see there still being something hidden and they're slowly giving you hints through updates. Yes. Because I mean, I for the love that. of God, there is a rocket pack in the mountain. They show you a fucking ro- rocket pack yep. on the wall. Jetpack. J- and jetpack. an egg and a UFO and a weird fucking map. And- <laughs> well, they found the UFOs. <laughs> yeah, There's been they, three UFOs found. Yes, they, they did find the well, UFOs. Well, now four. But four with the crashed one. I don't know. 
Like if I'm sure it'll be cool. Or it won't. I, I hope so. <laughs> it'll be cool or it won't. What are the options they got? Yeah. Like if all I, really, I know is my gut says maybe. <laughs> what, what I really what is it about a man that makes his heart go neutral? Um <laughs> I, I really hope that Rockstar isn't going to put out an update and say, look, guys, the Chiliad mystery is solved because of yeah. an update like that. That's just fucking shitty. The mm. best they could do and, and certain developers have actually done this before. They hide Easter eggs so well in their game. <clears throat> excuse me. They hide Easter eggs so well in their game that the players can't find them. So the devs themselves have to go onto to 4chan or Reddit and leak little tidbits of information to say, please <laughs> fuckers just find this. It's really cool. I spent yeah. days working on it. Right. I, I'm really hoping someone from Rockstar, like Sam Hauser just like gets on, yeah. on Twitch or something. And goes, guys, just look, it's like under like the fifth rock. Here's the coordinates. <laughs> just for the love well, of fucking God, just pick up the fucking rock. Imagine being one of those developers that you've already got this massively successful game and you've hidden something so diabolical and hidden and crazy and en en enigmatic and Ooh, nobody nice ever work. sees it. And you're it's, like, oh, God, no, it's guys, probably, it's, it's, it's the best part of the game. Guys, please find it. <laughs> it's, it's probably like you find this so thing this. and it unlocks an entire second half of GTA five. And the only thing we had been playing, the only thing that had been reviewed was the first half because no one could fucking get it through their thick skulls. Yeah. The they, game is they, actually 300 hours long and we've seen the first 60 because we couldn't pick up the right goddamn rock. You go through the alien mission and <laughs> the, entire, the entire city flips upside down and you have to play it all backwards. Right? See, what you have to do is you have to lure <laughs> Bigfoot to the mountain and he's going to punch the wall and expose <laughs> something new that you've never seen. So I did. I, I used some, uh, some single player only hacks to get into that place behind the map. There is something uh -huh. there. Uh, behind the elevator, there is an illuminated cube. It is. It, it looks like a test device. It is a cube. Hmm. It has no function. It has no collision. Possibly something cube. left over from debug. Could be debug. Could be someone fucking around. Could be Rockstar saying, oh, guys, they're going to fucking love this. Watch this. Oh, my God. <laughs> Look, it's fucking nothing. Wait they're going to go. They're going to go nuts. <laughs> Wait for the modders. To find they're going to go fucking nuts. It could be it could be a trigger object because there's actually uh, in certain RPGs, uh, Chrono Trigger is one of these where they actually take um, game objects and put them behind scenery because you can't interact. Like when you're talking to a shopkeeper, you have to get right up on them, but they have like a chair or something underneath the ground talking to you because you can't actually reach the shopkeeper behind the counter. <laughs> so it could be something like that. It could be a trigger object of some kind. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're part of the reason that I got taken off the market, Tom. Yeah, I know. <laughs> such a such a bad person. <laughs> speaking, of, uh, I won't say that. But in good news, no, I was about to say speaking to bad people. I'm like, I don't want to say <laughs> something bad about this guy because I don't know the dude. But I just know that he's well, made way. Eric, he's go ahead made, and judge him. Why don't you? <laughs> yeah, Jesus, he's just made way too many Settle of these down. games in this short of a time. But yeah. uh, Five Night at Freddy's creator has officially stepped away from number six. Saying he wants to do something new because, dear fucking Lord, we needed another Five Night at Freddy's. Hey, if he keeps printing <laughs> him goddamn money. No, 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 no. Yeah. Don't I mean, get me wrong. This is not me saying, dude, you should stop because you <laughs> right. should. It's you should stop because I don't want any more of these. <laughs> but they're making you money. For the love of God, make them if you want to. Like, I, I get yeah. that he has, he has creative differences. And Jesus fucking Christ, how long has Five Nights been going on? But... Not He's, that long. It's not long, long enough to have a sixth one get canceled. Two or, th two or three years? <laughs> but these yeah. printed money. Like, every time yeah. you put one out, every single child on the planet was like, oh my god, Five Nights at Freddy's. And it, it didn't mm -hmm. hurt him that it was on Android, and iOS, and Xbox, mm -hmm. and PlayStation, and PC, and Nokias, and Blackberries, and, you know, and you gin and tonics. Whole, and <laughs> it didn't hurt him. You had a whole him. genre. You had a whole genre of streamers and YouTubers playing right? these games yeah. and just overly being scared. <laughs> it yeah. didn't hurt him at all. That all it took was a point and click engine to make it. Yeah. Yeah. I he, mean, had, he had the recipe for success all there. I mean, it was just perfect. Suspense. He cashed in on suspense and that's all he did. I, yeah. bought, I bought the sister location. It's the only one I've purchased. And it was bad. I bought the first one. It was good. It Yo, was, yeah, I love playing that at your place. It, that was great. It, it, was, it was, yeah. It was jump scary. It was 
I mean, it's not something I would I would spend, you know, hours and hours and hours playing, but, you know, for the three or so hours that we played at my house while getting drunk and eating pizza, it was great. Mm. I spilled a bunch yeah. of coffee on my floor. It was wonderful. <laughs> and I, I enjoyed that game. I mean, honestly, it was hard. It yeah. was a hard game. And I liked that hard aspect to it. And it also scared the piss out of me because let's be honest, most people jump to jump scares. Yeah. Because it's not that you're actually frightened. It's that it's startling. You don't expect it. So, yeah. um, not, not to, not to completely derail, but, uh, a well instant master in chat has got an idea for the best game that no one has ever made. Oh God. Katamari Damacy VR. <laughs> <laughs> Why the fuck not? That would be fun, and that would control real easy. Yeah, because you could just you could roll shit up. Well, and I'm just thinking twin Does, stick <laughs> twin stick controls. You use the two touch pads, or you can actually do them like joysticks. No, I, I want to grab yeah. the fucking Katamari ball and like shove this thing around. So I haven't That's played set. much Katamari. Is there a way to like lose? Uh, you, you run out of time. Sorry. You have a certain amount of okay. time to get so big. You get big by rolling over stuff. Oh, and you so, have to. So by, um, punish, by punishment, if you lose, then you get stuck onto the ball, and you're in first person while the ball <laughs> is rolling in the ER. Oh no, it's even worse. It's even worse <laughs> because your your father who wears a cod piece will be disappointed in you. You're really oh, you're not rolling up a katamari in the time limit. You're earning your father's respect. Oh God! Yeah, yeah. See, this, this was a horror game. He won't be mad, but he won't be mad, but he'll definitely be disappointed. I do yeah. kind of agree with Adam in the aspect that there should be a lose condition when you don't meet the time. The ball does roll over you because or, in VR that will give you motion sickness, and that is your yes, penalty. And then well, you will vomit. You see, I think you get that, but you also get the end of level like King being disappointed in you, but you get yeah. the cod piece like right here in your face. Yeah, just like bulge right there. <laughs> The bulge right there, of, yeah, the bulge <laughs> right there in your face. Just the bulge right there in your face. I think every, we've got every a clip. copy of Katamari VR comes <laughs> with a tarp to play on. Yes. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, shit. I will say that's probably all we got for news. And honestly, I think that's all we got for this week. Yeah, that pretty much wraps it up. But before yep. we wrap it up, special thanks to mr v dobby for subscribing our first subscriber woot, woot, woot. the first one of all time we got the so, sub so which affiliates now have subscriber buttons and that's the thing so if you want to subscribe to us you can and, and he did would... with twitch prime which you can do for free if you have amazon prime just link it up with twitch and then you do the thing and, and we will you love you we I will should... love you so long <laughs> i should probably do so that. as of right now we don't have like super cool emotes for subscribers, but there will be by the time you decide to do so. Katamari we'll Bulge get, will be we one will of them. Right on that. And Katamari if you have suggestions for emotes, let us know. Yes. We'll, we'll probably make them. <laughs> and with that, um, before I do my end cast rant, reminder immediately following this, I'll be setting back up my computer, but Tom will be setting up the golf with your friend server. And we will be getting everyone that wants in, in with us. I don't have any yes. friends. We know, Tom. You'll play with my friends. <laughs> okay. Anyway. We'll be playing golf with Irk's friends. <laughs> but we will be putting a link to the Discord and chat immediately following this cast. And just come in, enjoy, and we'll be streaming. Whoop. So if you have any suggestions for us on topics or what you would like to play next week because you think golf with your friends sucks ass, you can tweet at us at, at 72 PC Podcast. If you're watching us live, we have been clipping out certain things from our cast as well as posting up other stuff at our YouTube at 72 Pin Connector. And in the event that you're watching us on YouTube, you should probably come over to our Twitch sometime at Saturday at about 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to watch us live while we do this amazing podcast. I heard it's one of the best in the world. It is. If you listen and or watch this podcast on a regular basis, you will get rich and attractive. It is guaranteed. I'm a doctor. Don't question him. He's a doctor. <laughs> and I think that's all we got for you until next week. So until then, game on. Game on. Bye. See you, everyone. See you.